Next, I would like to talk to you about dealer insurance. The state of Texas requires every motor vehicle driven on every roadway to be insured, including the demos and all the service vehicles that are owned by your dealership. It is illegal to drive any motor vehicle in Texas without proof of insurance or financial responsibility. It is also illegal for any motor vehicle owner, such as a licensed Texas dealer, to allow anyone else to drive the owner's vehicle, such as your demos, without insurance. So it's also illegal for you to allow your customers to drive demos that do not currently have insurance. So I want to talk about dealer insurance. Before you purchase any inventory to resell, you're going to need to obtain an insurance policy that's sometimes referred to as dealer insurance or garage insurance. Dealer insurance is a special type of business insurance that is quite unique in that it covers you when your customers are test driving your vehicles, it covers you or an employee when you're driving a vehicle, say for example, back and forth from an auction, and it also covers you if somebody's injured while on your lot. So it's very, very protective of you, the dealer. Many insurance agents do not sell dealer insurance. So you might call your insurance agent to find out if they carry dealer insurance. And if they do not, you're going to need to contact an insurance agency that specializes in commercial coverage. So be sure that they can explain the type of coverage that would be best for your dealership. So before you get in policy quotes, I want you to be aware that dealer insurance pricing normally depends on the location of your dealership. If you're close to a downtown metro area, your rates are going to be a little bit higher than if, say, for example, you're out in a rural area. It's also going to be based on your experience. So once you have three years of experience, you'll be paying a little bit lower rates, hopefully. And if you don't, then you certainly need to switch insurance companies. But if you do have less than three years of dealership ownership experience, you are going to pay a little higher rates than everyone else. But we want to get to that three-year plateau. So our rates are going to level off and we'll pay what all the other dealers are paying as well. Your pricing also is going to be dependent on the number of metal dealer license plates that you have. So if some year you qualify for more dealer plates than you actually need, you can actually request that the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles send less dealer plates and you would actually see a little bit of a decrease in your insurance. So your insurance pricing is going to be based on your location of your dealership, your experience, and the number of dealer plates that you possess. Dealer insurance can be quite expensive. However, once you become established and start generating profits, you're going to find that dealer insurance is just a small part of your operational expenses. But you might get a little bit of sticker shock the first time you get a couple of quotes, but just be aware that this is a high profit industry. And once you start buying and selling and running your business, you will find out that that insurance is really just a small part of your operational expenses. But you, before you get quotes, you need to be aware of the different types of dealer insurance that will uh, that will stay compliant, keep you compliant under Texas motor vehicle law. First, we'll talk about dealer liability, or sometimes it's called garage liability. So, dealer liability, it's just like dealer, it's just like liability on your own vehicle. So, you know, somebody wrecks one of your demos into another vehicle, it's going to fix the other vehicle. It's not going to fix your property because it is dealer liability. Obviously, it is the least expensive but obviously it's going to offer the least amount of protection. So I'm going to recommend, you know, uh, looking at dealers open lot. And, and you might think of this as full coverage for your inventory, but we don't really call it full coverage. We call it dealers open lot. And this is for your inventory in case it's damaged by wind, natural disaster, or hail. You know, Texas is a state that has tornadoes and hail and massive flooding. So remember just, just a few years ago uh, when I think it was Hurricane Harvey hit the Gulf Coast, flooded Houston, 1.2 million vehicles set underneath water for about two days. And uh, if you can ever imagine, you know, throwing a computer into a bathtub for a couple of days and think it's going to work afterwards, there's absolutely no difference between that and a flooded motor vehicle. So we've got dealers in the state that went into financial ruin, I guarantee you, over the years because they did not have enough coverage. But, you know, dealers open lots also going to cover you in cases of theft. And you don't think about this, but I've read cases where dealers have came into their lot and had all of their inventory stolen in one night. So if you ever showed up to your dealership tomorrow and your inventory was completely gone, I promise you, you would not be the very first dealer that that's happened to. So you need to make sure that you've got enough coverage for your inventory. So we call that dealer's open lot. And, and by the way, dealer's open lot is not going to cover a specific amount of vehicles. It always covers a dollar amount. So let's say, for example, you've got $50,000 worth of inventory. You need $50,000 worth of open lot coverage because, uh, you know, you are definitely looking at uh, damage by wind, natural disasters, or theft. So make sure if you've got 
your inventory built up, but you do consider dealers open lot. Now, Garage Keepers is a little bit different. Garage Keepers insurance is going to cover vehicles that are owned by a customer and they're leaving that at your dealership for repairs. So if you are doing repairs at your dealership, uh, then you definitely want to have Garage Keepers. Just in case you know a vehicle that one of your customers leaves at your lot is damaged or stolen, you would be covered for that. Errors and omissions. Errors and omissions is very important in our industry. And errors and omissions covers a dealer that fails to comply with the Federal Truth in Lending Act, which we'll cover extensively here in a little while. Or maybe you've made an error in your paperwork that's been submitted to the Motor Vehicle Division. Or uh, maybe you failed to disclose prior damage accidentally or failed to perform a title search. And it also, uh, you know, it's going to cover you under those certain uh, instances. So you, errors and omissions can certainly be an additional asset or a writer on your policy that you might want to explore. So have your insurance agent explain that to you uh, thoroughly. Employment practices liability provides coverage against sexual harassment lawsuits, wrongful termination of an employee, wage payment disputes, deprivation of career opportunity, and any type of uh, discrimination, excuse me, that's a hard word there, uh, that maybe your employees have committed against another employee. So this is something we need to be aware of. Harassment obviously has to be prevented in our dealerships. Workers' compensation is something we'll talk about a little bit more in depth later on in the course. Workers' compensation provides coverage in case of workplace injury to an employee. So we, we will go into that in depth later on in your dealer training course. Now, false pretense covers a dealer that purchases a vehicle from somebody that did not have the legal selling rights and also covers when a person purchases a vehicle from a dealer in a fraudulent manner, say, for example, using a uh, stolen ID. So definitely keep that in mind. Any dealer in Texas that does not maintain financial responsibility on service vehicles or allows demos to be driven without insurance could face penalties. So dealer insurance is a very important component of this industry. Make sure that you do have coverage for your inventory before you purchase any vehicles. Next, we are going to talk about our required documents. So as we go through the course, we're going to start a big paper trail here with this business and dealers in the state are going to be required to keep a minimum amount of records. And I'm going to go through these records throughout the course. Uh, and then at the end of the course, we'll definitely go down a list of all the records that you're going to be using uh, with the operation of a Texas dealership. The first one I want to cover with you, we call it the retail contract law, but most of us call this a bill of sale. So it's obviously under the Texas retail contract law, but most dealers call this a bill of sale. And I'm going to read the law here, and then I'm going to talk about this very, very important document. This is going to be the first required document that we have on every transaction. Texas law states every retail and wholesale sale of a motor vehicle must be preceded by a written contract that contains all the agreements of the parties and shall be signed <clears throat> excuse me, by the buyer and the seller. If financing is involved, state law requires you to have a retail installment contract, which can be printed by most dealer management software. So if financing is not involved, you still have to have some type of retail contract or bill of sale. And we'll talk about written installment contracts here in just a little while, because that will be a document that you'll have to have if there's any type of financing uh, that's involved on any type of sale. So the bill of sale that we're going to show you right here clarifies in terms any the, uh, the motor vehicle transaction terms in writing. So it's going to have to have a date of the sale, the vehicle description, you know, which is going to have the year, make, and model, the VIN number. That's your vehicle identification number. You always want to make sure your VINs are accurate. So you'll always need to double check every letter and every number on every vehicle identification number because they have to be accurate. So you're, you're going to get so tired of checking VINs, but it is imperative that you always make sure that your VINs are correct on all do documents that have anything to do with the operation <clears throat> of your dealership. On that bill of sale, you're going to have to have the name and the address of the person purchasing the vehicle, including the sales price, and also any other fees or charges uh, that are the total cost of the vehicle, including you know trade-ins, payoff of a trade-in, extended warranty, documentary fees, which we'll talk here in just a little while, and any type of credit insurance that the customer is required to have as well. So here you see on your screen, this is just a sample. Uh, of a bill of sale that you can easily print from any dealer management software that you might be using, or if you're not using software, you can certainly purchase a bill of sale from most dealer auctions. A bill of sale or retail installment contract is going to be required on every transaction. So our first required document on every transaction is going to be the bill of sale. Next, we're going to talk about a very important part of our industry, which is odometer disclosure 
and odometer tampering. The current mileage on any vehicle less than 10 years of age must be disclosed in writing. I want to repeat that very, very important statement. The current mileage on any vehicle less than 10 years of age must be disclosed in writing. The seller is required by law to disclose the odometer reading at the time of the sale. The odometer reading is not needed on a vehicle that is 10 or more years old or if it has a gross weight of more than 16,000 pounds, such as, as a semi truck or something like that, or if it's sold by a manufacturer directly to an agency of the United States government, it's not self propelled. Okay, so this another exemption would be a trailer. Obviously, you do not have to have odometer disclosure on a trailer, okay? Or it's a new motor vehicle being sold for the first time to a retail purchaser. So if somebody's buying a brand new vehicle direct from a franchisor, obviously odometer uh, disclosure is not going to be required because normally those are just brand new from the factory and they basically have no miles on them. So dealers must disclose information on any vehicle that is not exempt at the time of the sale. The state of Texas no longer requires dealers to complete an additional odometer disclosure statement that was required in the past. However, odometer disclosure must still be disclosed on this form. I'm going to show you here in a little while called Form VTR21A. And we'll cover that form extensively here uh, in just a little while. As a licensed Texas motor vehicle dealer, you must be aware of odometer brands and what cons constitutes odometer tampering and odometer tampering penalties. So let's take a look at this right here, uh, this chart here I want to show you on the next page. <clears throat> 